Prakar Shri Shri Guru Garanga Shri Shri Gandharvika Giri Hari Ju Ki Jai Jai Giri Radish Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Parivajakacharya Shila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Shila Bhakti Rakak Shridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnupad Bhagavan Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Maharaj Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Bol <coughs> Okay then this morning uh, we'll continue reading the 33rd chapter of Krishna book Titled Description of the Rasa Dance. Most of the gopis in their previous lives were sages, expert in the study of the Vedas. And when Lord Krishna appeared as Lord Ramachandra, they wanted to enjoy with him. Lord Ramachandra gave them the benediction that their desires would be fulfilled when he would appear as Krishna. Therefore the desire of the gopis to enjoy the appearance of Lord Krishna was long cherished. So they approached the goddess Katyayani to have Krishna as their husband. There are many other circumstances which also testify to the supreme authority of Krishna and show that he is not bound by the rules and regulations of the material world. In special cases, he acts as he likes to favor his devotees. This is possible only for him because he is the supreme controller. People in general should follow the instructions of Lord Krishna as given in the Bhagavad Gita and should not even imagine imitating Lord Krishna in the rasa dance. So we discussed that uh, a little bit uh, yesterday. Uh, the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis, we always have to qualify them uh, by understanding that they are not the pastimes of ordinary, meaning mundane boys and girls. This is the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead the Lord, the creator of everything, the original supreme person. And these are his uh, devotees. And they are, we, I think we read that they are expansions of his Ladini Shakti, his pleasure potency. <clears throat> so everything, the special position of, of the original person Ashutosh, who was Adi Purusha, the original person, the original male, is that he is, every, uh, everything is 
intended for his enjoyment. Everything is meant for his enjoyment. And uh, Srila Sridhar Maharaj liked to repeat the idea expressed by Hegel that God is by himself and for himself. He has no one to impress, no one uh, to, um, that, he ha that he is obligated to. He is not obligated to anyone. <laughs> he was not created by anyone. He has no mother or father in the real sense of the word. He has no creator. He is the original creator, but he has no creator. But he's not, who would he be obligated to? He's not obligated to anyone. After him, everything that comes after him is created for his own enjoyment. It's to suit him, to suit his pleasure. Whatever that pleasure may be. We may consider the pleasure to be cruel, or we may, be, we may consider it to be uh, something wonderful. That's also irrelevant. What it is to us is not, uh, is not important. What it is to him is what is vital for his pleasure. So he and he alone gets to decide what he wants for his enjoyment. Just like when I ask, tell Leela Sundri that I want a specific my sandwich made a specific way, and she can't say, no, no, I'm not giving you pickle on your sandwich. Mm. He won't, he, I, I'm not going to give him pickle. No, if I ask for pickle, then if you want to please me, then you have to give me pickles. Right, Leela? Right. If I say mustard, then you don't say ketchup. No, I'm giving him, no, I think he should have ketchup. I'm giving him ketchup on his sandwich. Yeah. Right? No, it has to be mustard. Yeah. So, when if if you're if someone is if someone is trying to serve me, then I'm I get to decide yeah. how that service should be done. And if I'm serving you, then you get to decide. Yeah. If I'm uh, uh, making uh, a drink for you and you say you want milk, then I shouldn't give you lemonade. Right? Right. You, you get to decide. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not service. Otherwise, to do the other thing means karma kanda. If we try to impose our will on the Lord or the Lord's devotees, then that means that is, that is mundane. Karma kanda means it's, it's reacting only within the material world. There's no transcendental reaction. There's no transcendental experience there. There's no, no connection with the higher. Absolute, only lower connection. So, as devotees and as, as disciples of our guru, we have to always be very careful that we are trying to serve our guru's desire and we are not trying to impose our desire, to enforce our desire upon him. He has absolute right over us, but we have no right over him. So that can be modified a little bit because even in Vaikuntha there are some uh, there are two and a half rasas in Vaikuntha. Uh, Shanta Ras, uh, Dasya Ras, and half Sakya Ras. So in Shanta Ras that means um, pass in passive relation and admiration of the Lord, but uh, no real service uh, relationship with the Lord. I am viewing from a distance the Lord with awe and reverence. I see him as my Lord and Master, but he is uh, uh, very great and I am very small, and uh, his uh, activities are wonderful, but uh, I have no participation in any active way in those uh, in those activities. That's Shantarasa. Then uh, Dasya Ras 
Oh, the Lord of Vaikuntha, he has many servitors, unlimited numbers of servitors, and they are all engaged in different types of service. But that is something like the descriptions of God in the Bible, where in the Bible God is a little hard. I, actually, I don't understand what God is in the Bible, but from what, I, what little I can understand, some sort of majestic figure, right? Some, uh, and, and again, and he has uh, uh, many servitors, unlimited perhaps servitors, and they are, uh, his servants are all serving him with great respect, with awe and reverence. Some are singing, some are, uh, that's about all I know. Some are singing, some are flying about as angels, entertaining him or something providing some beauty uh, for his uh, enjoyment. So that sort of God is majestic. He is the Father, Father of everyone. That's one description of God in the Bible. Well, Vishnu is the Father of everyone also. That can be thought in that way. So the servant, servants are there for Lord Vishnu, and they may attend to him in different services. So that's Dasyaras. And partial friendship is there, but, uh, but not full because uh, equality, full equality is ne never uh, enters into the um, uh, relationship of the devotees with the Lord Narayan or Lord Vishnu of Vaikuntha. So for true friendship, then there has to be equality. And Srila Siddharmaras explains that in Krishna's pastime, true friendship is there. The uh, cowherd boys, sometimes Krishna is carrying them on his shoulders. Sometimes the cowherd boys are carrying Krishna on their shoulders. So uh, there's uh, sometimes they are winning a fight with Krishna. <clears throat> Sometimes Krishna is winning a fight with them, or they are winning some game, or he is winning some game. It's not all that he is always winning. Sometimes he is defeated by his friends. And sometimes his friends are defeated by them, by him. So, uh, But that doesn't happen in, in Vaikuntha. In Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu, is not carrying any of his servants on his shoulders. He's not uh, playing with them as equals like that. But there's some intimacy, and uh, through that intimacy, there's uh, some partial friendship uh, develops naturally. So, uh, Krishna is not an ordinary human being, not in any way. <clears throat> he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this is what he enjoys. He's doing what he wants to do, what he likes to do. What he likes to do sometimes, one of the things he likes to do is uh, dance with his uh, uh, gopi girlfriends. And he is playing the part of an eight-year-old boy, showing himself as an eight-year-old boy. This is giving the residents of Vrindavan great happiness. His devotees are feeling very happy. Oh, Krishna's activities are wonderful. Krishna's wonderful activities. So, uh, a variety of activities. Uh, he sometimes gets in trouble and his mother has to chastise him. Sometimes he uh, is mischievous and his mother has to chastise him. And sometimes he is showing great affection, carrying his father's shoes on his head. Father is asking, bring me my slippers, and he's bringing his slippers on his head to his father with great affection, great love and affection. And sometimes uh, in the morning, after waking up, he is touching his mother's feet, out showing respect to his mother, and the same with his father, showing, accepting them in a superior position to his own. They are his guardians. He is 
giving them the opportunity to think that they are his guardians. Just as I've explained about deity worship, when we look after the deity, we're caring for the deity, we accept the deity, that we are the guardian of the deity. He is, we're thinking he is in a helpless position, so if he is uh, to be fed, then we have to feed him. If he is to be clothed, we have to clothe him. If he is to be entertained, we have, the one, we have to entertain him. When it's time to wake up, we wake him up. And when it's time to go to sleep, we put him to sleep. We are the guardian, his guardian. And, uh, so that, but that is his posing. It's not the real position. That's a position that he's posing. He's showing himself. And he's showing for not only his own pleasure, but by doing that, we are also feeling happiness, that he is accepting our service so kindly, very astonishing. We are nothing. What are we? Some sinful persons, selfish persons, lifetime, so many lifetimes in this material world trying to enjoy everything for our, ourself, trying to find satisfaction. What can I enjoy? What can I enjoy? First I enjoy this thing, then another thing, then another thing. Always seeking our own enjoyment. Smell, taste, touch, all these things. What can I taste? What can I touch? What can I smell? What can I hear? What will satisfy my mind? What will satisfy my intellect? So. Lifetime upon lifetime of selfishness, neglecting the Lord, neglecting God, and yet He is so kind upon us that He uh, comes Himself in a way that uh, allows us to interact with Him and this and and develop and our affection for him through service. By serving the deity, we, affect, we develop affection for the deity. That's the first, we serve the deity out of duty. I have to wake up at a certain time and wake the deity and uh, have to bathe and be clean and everything so that I can serve the Sri Krishna nicely. So, uh, some regulation is there also, uh, some formula, I'll do things in this way, ring the bell at this time, chant this mantra at this time, all these things, some regulation is there. Because we don't know how to do uh, the service properly at first on our own. We have to learn from someone who is serving Krishna. How am I to serve? What am I to do? What should I do? So first we learn that way. That's called vidhi, vidhi mar, the path of uh, following some rules and regulations, some guidance. What what Krishna's uh, his behavior here with the gopis? This is ragamark. They're not thinking of any sort of rule or regulation. The Vedas strictly prohibit all of this that we're reading about here. Well, we touched on that uh, yesterday or the day before. The the injunctions of the Vedas is that young boys and young girls have to be strictly segregated. They're not to be have chance to meet together. Only husband and wife. So young girls and young boys, they have one area of act the boys have one area of activity, the girls a different area. And uh, their parents uh, when they want to uh, when they see their children are the age of marriage, then they arrange the marriage of their children with suitable partners, male or female. And then some uh, gradual uh, association, some small association is allowed between the, those who will be married the girl and the boy, they're allowed association, encouraged to uh, meet each other, get to know each other, but always with some supervision. 
some adult supervision. But here there's no adult supervision. The adults are sleeping. <laughs> the children have run out of the house and uh, snuck out, climbed out through the windows and somehow snuck out of their houses and going in the nighttime, Krishna to meet the gopis and the gopis to meet Krishna. So that's Ragamarg. They abandoned the rules and regulations because their love for Krishna uh, has enabled them to surpass uh, even the rules of the Vedas, which are given by Krishna himself. Krishna is the one who, uh, who is, the, is the origin of those rules. He's the origin of the Vedas. Vedaischa sarvairaham eva vedyam vedanta krit veda vid eva chaham. I am the source of all Vedic knowledge, Krishna tells Arjuna. So Krishna is the source of the Vedas. They emanate from him. But because they emanate from him, that means he can change it all in a moment. Oh, I said this yesterday, but today I say this. Easy. So yes, I say that you follow the rules, the injunctions of the Vedas. But if you have true love for me, then actually you cross over that. That's more important. Sarva dharma and prajaja, mamekam, sarva dharma, all religious duty, yeah, throw it away. It's meaningless for those who have sincere, real, actual, genuine love and affection for the Lord. Then, then he only behaves with them through that affection. That's the entire relationship. No more vidhi, no more rules and regulation. Rule and regulation then is the rule of the heart. How is the heart governing the activity? That's Krishna and Vrindavan. The heart, the rule of the heart, the rule of uh, affection. So the gopis are be, are, get the chance to behave with Krishna in this way, but they are very uh, 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 remarkable very unusual, very extraordinary devotees of Krishna. Because their affection for him is so strong that he is accepting them uh, as his uh, intimate uh, friends. Very uh, uh, accepting them to express their desire to love him, to serve him in very intimate ways. So we're always cautioned. Actually, what we're reading here, and we're always cautioned, don't read it. <laughs> don't read it until you've gone through so many other things. After you've read the, uh, the, all the, the previous uh, portions of Srimad Bhagavatam, then, it's, then when you uh, have understood that and have made some progress in Christ understanding who Krishna is, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who you are as a meager servant, then you can read about these pastimes. You have to have first some background so you understand what these pastimes are not. Understanding what they are not in our present stage, understanding what they are not, is more important than understanding what they are. They are not mundane, material uh, activities of enjoyment between mundane actors, mundane boys and girls. Uh, nothing mundane at all, not in the least. These are the highest and purest expressions of devotees' love for Krishna and Krishna's love for his devotees. So the cheaters, they like this the best. This, they like to concentrate on these activities of Krishna, uh, enjoying with the gopis in the rasa dance, and then they like to imitate those, these activities with their mundane uh, lady friends. And 
the ladies with their mundane boyfriends, boyfriends in the garb of a Babaji or some other sort of uh, sadhu who is exploiting the, the ladies and the ladies are exploiting him, both cheating the other, pretending, uh, imagine, imagining that, they, that the, their relationship has something to do with Krishna when it has nothing to do with Krishna. So we must know what this is not and uh, be very careful that we don't think that this is something ordinary, what we are reading about. People in general should follow the instruction of Lord Krishna as given in the Bhagavad Gita. Well, that's the main thing for us is to follow that. And should not even imagine imitating Lord Krishna in the Rasa dance. Krishna's lifting of Govardhan Hill and his killing of great demons like Putana are all obviously extraordinary activities. So anyone who wants to enjoy this activity of dancing with young girls and uh, uh, imagining that he is Krishna and they are the gopis, then let him lift Govardhan Hill. First show you can do that. Anyone can do that? No. And don't think about this either. Similarly, the rasa dance is also an uncommon activity and cannot be imitated by any ordinary man. Well, just as an ordinary man cannot lift Govardhan Hill, he cannot engage in the rasa dance with the gopis. An ordinary person engaged in his occupational duty, like Arjuna, should execute his duty for the satisfaction of Krishna. That is within his power. Arjuna was a fighter, and Krishna wanted him to fight for his satisfaction. Arjuna agreed, although at first he was not willing to fight. Duties are required for ordinary persons. They should not jump up and try to imitate Krishna and indulge in rasa lila and thus bring about their ruin. Well, just like we were reading about uh, Lord Shiva, he can drink an ocean of poison, but we cannot drink poison. We should not imitate the activities. His power, his potency is far, far beyond ours. If we try to imitate Lord Shiva, then we will suffer greatly for that. So we should not, in the same way, we should not imitate the activities of Lord Krishna. One should know with certainty that Krishna had no personal interest in whatever he did for the benediction of the gopis. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, namang karmani lim, uh, limpanti, Krishna never enjoys or suffers the results of his activities. Therefore, it is not possible for him to act irreligiously. He is transcendental to all religious duties and principles. He is untouched by the modes of material nature. He is the supreme controller of all living entities, whether in human society, in demigod society, in the heavenly planets, or in lower forms of life. And he is also the supreme controller of material nature. Therefore, he has nothing to do with religious or irreligious principles. Shukadeva Goswami further concludes that the great sages and devotees who are washed clean of all conditioned life can move freely even within the contamination of material nature by keeping Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, within their hearts. In this way, they also do not become subject to the laws of pleasure and pain in the modes of material nature. How then is it possible for Krishna, who appears by his own internal potency, to be subject to the laws of karma? In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord clearly says that whenever he appears, he does so by his internal potency. 
He is not forced to accept a body by the laws of karma, like an ordinary living entity. Well, we, we appear in this world forced by the laws of karma. We, in our, we had life previous to this, and we did things in, the, in that previous life which caused us to take birth in this life. Take birth in this life means this body, this mental system that we have, the intellectual system that we have. It's carry over from our previous life. Didn't all come about in this life. Life after life, we've engaged in activities with the attachment, attached to the enjoyment and uh, uh, means of enjoyment in this material world through the senses, material senses, mind, e false ego, etc. So because of that, everything we do, every action has a reaction. If we do something positive, so-called positive, something pious, we give welfare, we give charity, uh, we clothe, we feed, we nurture, we care for uh, someone, some living entity in this material world, then uh, we'll get some good result. What is the good result? So-called good result? Wealth, we'll achieve wealth, we'll achieve good health, We'll achieve handsome bodily features, etc. We won't be troubled much by uh, problems of this world. Well, that's those things come as a result of good karma, and bad karma is the opposite. If we do evil things, if we do sinful things, we harm others, we uh, inflict pain and suffering upon others, then. Uh, that uh, suffering will come back to us. That's karma. Whether in the, in, the, in the present life or in the future life, it will come back to us. If we cheat, if we steal, if we do anything that will uh, cause suffering for others, then that will, uh, we will have to suffer for that ourselves, either in this life or in the next. So this life, uh, in this life we are suffering and enjoying the reactions to the things that we did in our previous life. The actions we took in our previous life, in this life we are suffering and enjoying the consequences. But that's not the condition, that's not the case for Krishna. Krishna had, there is no consequence for him. He can do whatever he likes and there's no consequence. So when he comes to this material world, it's not like us. He is not forced to come. He comes out of his own sweet will, his desire to come. He is not, not forced to accept a body by the laws of karma, like an ordinary living entity. Every other living entity is forced to accept a certain type of body by his previous actions. But when Krishna appears, he always appears in a body that is not forced upon him by the action of his past deeds. His body is a vehicle for his transcendental pleasure pastimes, which are enacted by his internal potency. He has no obligation to the laws of karma. The Mayavadi monist must accept a certain type of body being forced by the laws of nature. Therefore his claim to being one with Krishna or God is only theoretical. Don't, don't go out there. Such persons who claim to be equal with Krishna and indulge in rasa lila, create a dangerous situation for the people in general. Well, dangerous for people in general, why? Because then other people will think they can also imitate these pastimes. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was already present as the super soul within the bodies of the gopis and their husbands. So present as super soul means 
Krishna is already so intimately related with us. He sees everything that we do. Every living entity. Krishna is with every living entity as Paramatma, as Super Soul. And he's witnessing every single thing the living entity does. Krishna is seeing. We're hide, we can hide nothing from him. <laughs> nothing can be hidden. Not only from Krishna, even the demigods, they can see our activities. There's no privacy. In this world, people think that there is some privacy. Private, Leela Sundari says privacy rights. We have no right to privacy because someone is always has the ability to see us. The demigods, they have, and the ghosts, um, these entities in subtle bodies, they can be present. We don't know that they're present watching us, but they may be. It's possible. So Krishna also, his power is much greater than that. His power is that he is always with us, always watching, every single moment. Not a moment passes that he is not with us, observing our activities, observing our, con observing our consciousness. And he's there for a reason, and the reason is to be our friend, because he's our friend. He doesn't want us to be alone, even though we seek to be alone. We seek to avoid him. He's so friendly that he won't allow us to be alone. He won't allow us to avoid him. No. Even if you avoid me, I'll still be with you. I will never leave you. That's when the Christians, Christians say God is love and things like that. This is the meaning. What is they? Or now, but uh, they have some idea like that. But this is the meaning. Yeah, super soul, Paramatma. He is all, always with the living entity, everywhere. Never a moment, not one moment, that he is not uh, present with us. We can't see him. We've forgotten how to see him. We do not know the means of uh, identifying him seeing his presence with us. The yogis, they get some glimpse of that. They may get some full impression of that through their practices. And the devotee also, he will also get that chance. Uh, the conditioned souls, they are not understanding that Krishna is always with them. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was already present as the super soul within the bodies of the gopis and their husbands. He is the guide of all living entities, as is confirmed in Nikata Upanishad, Nityo Nityanam, Chaitanas Chaitananam. The super soul directs the individual soul to act, and the super soul is the actor and witness of all action. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is present in everyone's heart. Surudam Sarvabhutanam. Surudam. He is within everyone's heart. And that from him come all knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. He is the original person to be known by Vedic knowledge. He is the author of the Vedanta philosophy, and he knows the Vedanta philosophy perfectly well. The so-called Vedantists and Mayavadis cannot understand Krishna as he is. They simply mislead their followers by imitating the actions of Krishna in an unauthorized way. Krishna, the super soul of everyone, is already within the body of everyone. Therefore, if he sees someone or embraces someone, there is no question of impropriety. Meaning, means there's no question of wrongdoing. Krishna cannot do anything wrong. Okay, we'll stop there and mark our place. Any questions? No. Huh? No.
how do we how do we if someone uh, thinks that they are qualified to in, to enjoy a the a rasa dance like Krishna, how how can we uh, challenge him to be sure that he he is not qualified as Krishna is? What was the question again? Prabhupada is writing here that many uh, demoniac persons uh, imit want to imitate the pastimes of Krishna by enjoying dancing with young girls, as if uh, they have they are Krishna and these young girls are gopis. Mm -hmm. So how do we how can we challenge such a person and show expose him as a fraud? Well, they said not to imitate Krishna. Yeah. Well, he may say, no, I am Krishna. Okay. Then lift Govardhan Hill. Show me that you can lift Govardhan Hill. <laughs> right? If he can lift Govardhan Hill, then we'll give him some consideration. He can drink an ocean of poison like Lord Shiva. Then we'll consider he may have some potency, some power, special power. Right. If he can lift over down the hill, first you lift over down the hill. You want to enjoy in the, the pastimes of Krishna and young girls, like Krishna enjoyed with the gopis, okay, then show us you can lift over down the hill. I will give some considerations here. An idea. Jai Sparikar Shri Shri Guru Granga Shri Shri Gandharvika Giridhari Ju Ki Jai. Jai. Om Agyana Timarandasya Gananjana Shilakaya Chachurunali Tamjena Tasmai Shri Gurudeva Gaur Haribo.